What's going on everyone? As always, God loves you and so do we. So we're gonna give you an update. Things that we have talked about and or between ourselves and what's going on. Here we have our barn. One of our barns. One of our, and what I'm thinking about doing, Mrs. Nick Gardner doesn't know this, so what y'all know is gonna win, she knows this, is I'm thinking about putting this as a root cellar uh, barn, possibly taking this down and having the barn kind of flipping it, probably as a, either a she shed type of uh, classroom type barn, possibly uh, set up for once we get later down the road and starting to do some classes maybe. What's your thoughts on that? I'm, I'm not opposed to it because I feel like that's something that even got us on track was people willing to show us what they knew. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm one that I've taken a crumb, like I took a crumb from Big Bear Homestead and kind of ran with it, learned more things. Um, I took a crumb from Alderman's Farm. Uh, right now I've really gotten into bread uh, making. And if y'all want to see some videos of her making some bread. Sourdough. Either, either bread. Comment down below and make sure you hit that like button. If we get a hundred likes, she has to make a video about bread making. <laughs> That's not cool. Yes, it's very cool. <laughs> so we're gonna take a look. I, I know most of y'all that's follow us before when we did a premiere, uh, seen the inside of here, and you'll see why I kind of want to basically tear this down. Not anytime soon, because it's gonna cost money and put a, a structure where we can do classrooms along with storing some of our canned goods, fermented goods, and things that we uh, produce off that of our is, farm. That is an issue that we're about to be running into yeah. on where to store some of our canned goods because we don't have the best storage inside of the house. No. And honestly, it's just the two of us. Everything that we got from our small little, like, I can't believe that we even got in yeah. the garden is enough to carry us through. And then we're plus the some. Yeah. And then we're about to have our winter garden where uh, I want to play with making some kimchi mm. and some canned collard greens. I want to do some stuff like that, which I need a pressure cooker for a uh, <sighs> water ba bath um canning is only good for certain things you need if you're going to have like meats in a recipe certain things you have to have pressure canner for so yeah and then once we get out into the our bigger livestock animals this will be a good if we could get into a cold storage area depending on the square footage that we will need this will be a good place so let's take a look at this ready Does this one? Oh yeah, this one. Is. So here we got definitely have to, reason why I want to get, kind of get rid of this. It's just hard to open. And with the, I'd rather have something facing, since the house is this way, I'd rather have something facing the house. So I can see somebody coming in and out of this area. If we get rid of this and just put a concrete floor and maybe put a drainage system to go out to the covert over there. I think this would be a good place for a training slash cold storage slash root cellar area. So just, I'm thinking about possibly tearing this down, putting a new structure up, putting some barn doors this way with a very cool cold storage and a walk-in uh, refrigerator or area. So that way when we're butchering our livestock. Once we eviscerate them, they can be, have their hanging weight where they can be in here for about a day or two, and then we can start processing them. Now we'll take a look at the big barn. So here I'm thinking of still having the goats here possibly with my new work schedule. I think I'm gonna hold off an extra year on doing the goats and still getting the sheep. Are you okay with that? I, I'm, I'm down with the sheep. I'm pro sheep. I'm not pro goat. I know you're pro. I'm pro Nigerian dwarf goats for cheese and for milk and 
for making soaps, um, but I'm not down for any meat goats. So, and the reason why that I'll say that is because with my new work schedule uh, and with the evenings, fall, winter schedule, by the time I get home, it is super late. And sometimes I have to work on the weekends. I don't want to put that much workload on Mrs. Nikki Gardner. So because I'm also still editing our videos. So because she's going to be dealing pretty soon, she's going to be dealing with our egg layers, our meat chickens and our meat ducks. Uh, then she's going to be catching her, uh, her swarm that I got to help her build around before spring comes or her hive. We still got to do our orchard, lay that out. And we don't have child labor. It's just the two of us. It's just the two of us. So this is something totally new for us. Uh, we're empty nesters, never done this before. So if you're new to the channel and you want to do something like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And so that way you can follow our journey so you don't make the same mistakes that we're making. But what I was thinking, and maybe you can, and Mrs. Neckengarten doesn't know anything about this. I was just thinking about this in my head. So we'll still possibly keep the goats in here year three or four, but I kind of want to start gearing this up to where if any of our animals need to be weaned off or give birth, use this as a birthing bin, pen type ordeal. How you? I, like that. I like that idea. And then. And, and it's funny that you thought of that because I actually was silently thinking of that as well. So I was thinking about putting these in different sections. Uh, my friend Don, who I used to work with, he was saying to kind of, cause these beams looks pretty sturdy. He was saying if we dig like two feet deep and two feet wide, do a concrete uh, gray beam uh, through here, through the perimeter and through across to here to kind of make sure that these beams don't move or shift or anything of that nature will be good. The roof structure is kind of iffy because it has a little sag in here. Um, so we still have to replace the roof. One of our friends, uh, the Yellow Rose Homestead was talking about, they did a, a solar panel. Yeah, and they got that from Harbor Freight for <laughs> under $200. So we, once we get all this done and probably uh, raise the canopy on some of these trees, we might be able to do, uh, we'll invite them over. He's very uh, solar panel technical suave. I'm not. I would think that this would be a good area to house uh, any of the animals to breed some of the animals and then wean them off. I think we have plenty of room. We probably have a, I think this is like a 30 by 60 area. So we, we're wanting to do like um, breeding in here and birth. It's a breeding birthing barn. Mostly birthing and birthing and weaning off. So like our goats, sheep, pigs, those the, the reason I said that is, is that we have this fencing over here. Yeah, and this will be, we'll still have this for the goats and sheep, especially, or the bucks. And Big Bear, he brought up a good point because there's a, a dented panel right here. If we make that the opening, we won't lose much from there. That I mean, the panel's pretty much gone, but if we do an opening for a door, then you know we don't have to worry about losing much and they can he also said that we i mean we do need to beef up the structure because they will just headbutt and yeah kind of ram into yeah i think it's pretty sturdy though i don't think they'll be I, we might have to weld tack weld some of these uh panels so that way one won't break through but the bucks we got to make sure our bucks whether it's sheep or ram be uh away from the females. Here is one of our young pecan trees and right around this area we're going to have one of our paddocks and I will probably have this as a finish off or if we have our hogs. That one's going to be pushed off to probably year six maybe eight around that time frame because I want to make sure I'm not putting too much pressure on Mrs. Necker Gardner while I'm at work. You're just trying to retire to be here. After watching some videos I learned that uh, we're gonna have to prune a lot off of this tree because there's what they call, you want a one liter trunk and you got the liter trunk here, liter trunk here, and you're about to have another liter trunk here. 
So during the winter time, when this tree goes back into dormancy, we're gonna be cutting this, this limb off, this limb off, these limbs, and this limb. And that way it will put most of that energy back into the root system. And then when comes springtime, it's gonna be able to fruit out and get a, a lot fuller. I'm also trying to harvest and grow some pecan trees from seed. I know it's gonna take anywhere from 10 to 15 years, but I would like to have more trees on this property for the fact that we're gonna have a lot of livestock and a lot of the livestock here in Northeast Texas, it gets very hot that they're gonna need some type of shade from the sun. Here we have our mulberry tree. This was a one of our first surprises after week two being on this property. The missus was uh, cutting the grass and while she was here, I was Marco Poloing with some friends and I was like, hey, uh, do y'all know what this little uh, berry is? And they said, that looks like a mulberry plant. So I was like, oh, let me see. I had the missus taste it. I had to make sure it was uh, edible first. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they was, she was like, oh, it's sweet, it's good. I was like, I'm gonna wait about 15 more minutes before I try one. <laughs> and so she kept on mowing for a while. I was like, okay, let me see. Yeah, it was, it was kind of sweet. So I actually took some cuttings off of here and I, I just stuck in them in some water. It's been about, eight maybe ten weeks now and they got some roots on there so once again we're going to try to plant some of these out here uh it's going to provide not only shade but also some uh, nutrition value to our livestock so that's going to be good off of here i might also still prune these because we got this branch right here and some other plant uh, branches that kind of cross in between then we got these crazy uh this crazy tree bush whatever i'm not sure what it is if y'all know what this is comment down below and let us know one weekend we went out to the cottage farms and uh, we met an interesting couple so if you're in the lamar county make sure you hit them up they have a wonderful setup uh, they introduced us or made us aware about what the programs that the usda has available especially for minorities veterans and so we started looking them up. And one thing that kind of disappointed me about the USDA, they was telling us that with our, third, our ideal plan of putting a 30,000 gallon tank right here to collect rainwater would be too much where we'd be relying too much on the tank instead of their system. Isn't that crazy? So we might have to get a smaller tank or it might even have to get multiple tanks. So we're trying to see how that seems very pro pond use. Yes. Now he was saying that they will stock the pond and do different things for veterans for our, our, our pond. And they don't go by surface square footage. They go by acreage and it goes also by how deep it is. But the way he was trying to make it seem like he was more leaning towards the, like helping us get a pond a stocked pond and instead of doing our own system where you could use a pump uh, from our pond to kind of irrigate and provide uh, watering for our livestock. And I wasn't all about that. So we're not 100% sure of what's coming down the pipeline, but we are working on figuring out what things might be available to us to help us with our plan. Hopefully I could go down there uh, to their main office sometime this week, start filling out some of the paperwork. We got to take the deed down and also my DD-214. Once that's there, we can get more information. So stay tuned to find out what you can get if you're a, a minority veteran or a or something of that nature. And they don't go by veteran being disabled or anything. It's just basically a veteran, a minority, a female, those types of things. They also were able to give a, a grant or some things for even a high tunnel. So that way we can grow and keep things, especially our citrus. Once we do our orchard, we could be able to house our citrus plants and even our avocado. And Mrs. Naked Gardener could get her bananas uh, all in the high tunnel. Now they do require some type of proof that we can grow food. So we're just going to promote. We, just, we didn't tell them that we had a YouTube channel growing food. Yeah. So if no they want to see that, we'll just promote that and they'd be like, 
hopefully they'll that give us a okay for having a high tunnel so that'd be good now he didn't he did say that it won't be a large one and we're fine with that because being in north texas we really don't need a greenhouse or we probably a high tunnel will be more uh sufficient for us but we won't need a greenhouse per se so that's one thing that's going to be on hold on this area is the water system. Yeah, so we might take a trip down there. Oh, and also bees uh, with the USDA, they will do some type of uh, stuff funding for bees. So that's a good plus for us as well. So those are some of the highlights and some of the updates that we're going to be doing on our farm. Right now, we're going to be putting up the uh, egg layer chickens, the Mrs. Little Girls. And so watch this, my little pirate my little pirate, uh, That's my, ugly baby. my little pirate chicken lady. So she's about to go put them up. Go go. It's so funny. Go. Uh huh. Like that. Good night.